Welcome, I'm Ed Dominguez, and today we're getting wild about the pileated woodpecker. Recently, I received a question from a couple that had been on a walk in the woods. They sent me a photograph of a tree that had similar holes like this, and they wanted to know what's going on here. Was the tree diseased? Had something damaged it? Was it the work of vandals? I was happy to reply that no, it's a natural feature. These holes were made by the pileated woodpecker, the largest woodpecker we have in North America. This bird's scientific name is Dryocopus pileatus. Pileatus, or pileated, means crested and refers to the most obvious feature of this woodpecker, the bright red feathers on top of its head, or its crest. This is a large bird, the size of a crow, and is all black with white on the wings and white stripes on the face. Males and females look alike, with the exception of the male, as in this photo, has a red mustache, which is known as a malar stripe. In the female, the malar stripe is black. Despite his big size, pileated woodpecker only weighs about 10 ounces, less than a can of Coke. This light weight, due to its hollow bones, gives it a very efficient weight-to-lift ratio for flying. This lift is enhanced by the pileated's broad wingspan, up to 30 inches, as in this male. This classic view of a pileated on a tree shows three important anatomical features. First, the black malar stripe indicates that this bird is a female. Second, the stiff tail feathers that possessed by woodpeckers shows how they use these as a brace to keep their purchase and stability on vertical surfaces such as tree trunks. And third, woodpeckers have the ability to rotate their outer toe from the front to the back so they can cling with two claws in front, two in back, further enhancing their stability. The pileated woodpecker makes these characteristic rectangular holes in the tree and they can go quite deep into the tree. See how far my hand goes in? When the woodpeckers left the area, these holes are frequently utilized by other birds as nesting cavities and sometimes as food caches. This is a Gary Oak acorn placed in this woodpecker hole, most likely by a Stellar's jay. The square to rectangular geometry is diagnostic of pileated excavations. Other woodpeckers excavate round holes. Particularly on the upper side, this shape accommodates the pileated's large crest without damaging its feathers. And hey, what self-respecting pileated would want to mess up that beautiful red hairdo? The wood from the excavations of the woodpecker holes falls at the base of the tree in a pile of wood chips like this. Now those of you with curious minds, and I hope that's all of you, are probably wondering two questions. Number one, how do woodpeckers not end up with headaches or concussions? And number two, why would you want to make your living constantly bashing your head against the trunks of trees and excavating these holes? The answer, carpenter ants, the number one food choice for pileated woodpeckers, followed by bark beetles, spruce budworms, and termites. But carpenter ants are number one on their list. But how does the woodpecker know which tree has ants in it? They can hear the ants through the bark. By rapping on the outside of the tree, woodpeckers can tell by the resonant feedback, very much like a carpenter can rap on the walls inside a house and tell whether there's a stud under the drywall, whether there are carpenter ant chambers on the other side of the bark. Once they find a carpenter ant chamber, they go to work excavating, and with their barbed tongue, when they find the carpenter ants, pull them out like eating Skittles, dozens at a time. These horizontal lines in the wood are the remnants of the chambers where bark-boring beetles chewed their way through the cambium layer of this hemlock when it was alive. The woodpeckers have come in and excavated all this area of bark and cambium to eat the bark boring beetles. The reason woodpeckers don't suffer concussions or even headaches is something called the hyoid process. In this beautiful illustration by Denise Takahashi, 
you can see the hyoid, which is a strange mix of tissue, part bone, part tendon. It attaches at the right nostril of the woodpecker, goes up over the frontal bone of the skull, divides into two elastic-like bands around the parietal bones, and then wraps under the skull. When it enters the woodpecker's mouth, it rejoins into one piece of tissue and attaches to the tongue. In the relaxed position, the hyoid process is loose behind the back of the skull. But when the woodpecker wraps on the wood and extends its tongue, the hyoid process tightens, like two seat belts wrapped around the brain case of the woodpecker, preventing the brain from damage and preventing the woodpecker from suffering a concussion. In this view, you can see the hyoid process extended with the long tongue coming out of the woodpecker's mouth. The tip is tipped with sharp hook-like barbules and sticky saliva, perfect for allowing the woodpecker to extract its prey. Look at this tree. This is the work of pileated woodpeckers. Now all trees are invaded by insects, laying eggs on the leaves and stems, or in the crevices of the bark, eating the leaves, boring into the cambium layer to eat. And that's not a bad thing, because it's the insects that feed our birds. No insects, no birds. But this western hemlock is dead and can no longer offer any chemical resistance to insects that invade it. So they've come in and made it their smorgasbord. And the pileated woodpeckers have come in and made a feast of the insects, excavating these tremendous chambers. But it's all part of nature's recycling plan. Everything is reused in nature, and this once mighty western hemlock will be reduced to a pile of wood chips and will provide the soil for the next generation of plants that grow in the forest. Both the male and female pileateds work on building the nest, excavating a deep hole in the tree. The typical clutch is three to five eggs, and the young stay in the nest for nearly a month, and they are ravenous. Thanks for joining me today on our Pileated Adventure. And remember, the world of nature is waiting for you. So get outdoors, stay curious, and please hit subscribe. And join me for more Getting Wild.